Merlin Olson, welcome to Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas. The Cowboys and the Dolphins in a matchup of quality. Don Shula, just one regular season win behind his opponent today, Tom Landry of the Dallas Cowboys. And these teams, as you've said so often, Merlin Olson, do take on the personalities of their coaches. And these two coaches have as much respect from their players and from their competitors than any two that I have ever had a chance to be around. They also know how to get their teams ready to play, and I think we can look forward to a very tough, very physical football game today. The Dolphins have won the toss. Fulton Walker deep to return as Rafael Septien will kick it off for Dallas. The Cowboys have won 13 in a row regular season here at home. And in contrast, the Dolphins have beaten NFC teams 13 in a row. So something will have to break today. Fairly short kick. Walker at the 12. And the rookie is down at the 29-yard line. Anthony Dickerson, number 51, made the tackle. The Dolphins take the field with young David Woodley at quarterback, the second-year man from LSU. And his offensive backfield reads this way. Tony Nathan and Andra Franklin, the rookie from Nebraska. Duriel Harris, Jimmy Cephalo for the injured Nat Moore on the outside with Ronnie Lee, the tight end. The offensive line, Giesler, Kuchenberg, the veteran, Dennard, Newman, and Lasso. That unit, that five-man offensive line, now has been together 18 games in a row, and Don Shula feels they're really molding into a fine unit. From the 29, Woodley deflected. And D.D. Lewis very nearly had an interception as that ball bouncing in the air, and Nathan was the only one who could get a hand on it. Ed Tutal Jones with that fly swat play for the Cowboys, and here's the defensive alignment for Dallas. Tutal, Dutton, Randy White, the all-pro at right tackle, and Harvey Martin, the leading sack man for the Cowboys. Mike Hedman on the left side, Bob Bruning in the middle, D.D. Lewis, the oldest Cowboy on the right side. The backs, the sensational youngster, Everson Walls, six interceptions. Dennis Thurman on the other side. Michael Downs, a rookie, and veteran Charlie Waters. They call it Charlie's Angels because of the youth of that defensive backfield. And, of course, Waters, Charlie Waters, the veteran, guiding them. Big pullback, Andra Franklin gets only three yards before John Dutton puts a shoulder into him. And it'll be third down and about seven. I think if you ask Tom Landry what his greatest concern is about his football team, he'd talk about his defensive backfield. It's a makeshift backfield with two rookies in the game. The last time the, the Dallas Cowboys put a rookie in their defensive backfield was back in 1970. A young man uh, started at safety then for them. Uh, back there in the defensive safety position. They've got two out there right now. And Cliffy Harris uh, would turn over in his grave if he saw two rookies on the field <laughs> at the same time. Third down. Woodley finds Cephalo and a first down at the Dallas 47. As they work on the youngster, Everson Walls, a 20-yard gain. One of the reasons that, that Walls has so many interceptions, he gets a lot of chances. And obviously, the game plan today from the Miami Dolphins will be to test both of the young rookies in that secondary. And here you see an excellent pass. Cephalo with surprising speed, deceptive speed. And he's also got two of the softest hands in football. Did a fine job of containing that football. Big first down for the Miami Dolphins. Out of the eye, Andrew Franklin and Tony Nathan. Now they shift. Tony Nathan. Out of bounds at the 46 after a one-yard gain. It was Walls, 24, coming up from the corner to make the tackle. Second down for Miami. Now let's go to New York and NFL 81. This is Brian Gumbel in New York at Rich Stadium in Buffalo. The Bills have just beaten the Denver Broncos. With one second left, Nick Mickelmeyer making good from 35 yards through the uprights. Buffalo 9, Denver 7. Let's go back to Dallas. Oh, well, that's a big field goal for the Buffalo Bills. Thank you, Brian. They're trying to stay within a game and a half of Miami. Harvey Martin can't make the tackle. Woodley. He's down at the 42 of the Cowboys. Instead of a five, six yard loss, Woodley gains four. One of the things you try and talk to defensive ends about is not going over the top of that quarterback. 
Harvey Martin will be coming from the top of your picture right there. Watch him go right over the head of Woodley, who ducks down, lets Martin slide by, and then uses his running skill. Gets out. You see the black jacket, see the bulge under his jacket? I gotta believe that that hurt a just a mite because the, uh, those injured ribs are on the right back side of, the, of Woodley's chest. Probably pinched a little bit when he went down there, Dick. Third down from the Dallas 42. Anthony Dickerson was in the backfield almost at the time that Woodley took the snap from center. The only man on the Dallas team that can go 10 yards quicker than Anthony Dickerson is Tony Dorsett. And you see what that kind of acceleration speed can do for a linebacker. He was back there ahead of the quarterback. He must have been guessing on the snap count as he just leaped over the center and grabbed him by the backside. Well, also tremendous agility. Mike Ditka says that's the most gifted athlete on this entire Cowboy team. Tom Oros, the free agent punter from Ohio State. James Jones at the other end for Dallas. It's a short kick. 16 yard line. Jones faked himself right off his own feet and he's down at the 20. Steve Scholl, number 52 and 40, Mike Kozlowski made the tackle a 33 yard punt. Danny White, the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys, and here's the offensive set for Dallas. A game behind Philadelphia starting play today. Tony Dorsett, his best start ever, and of course he's been sensational every year. Ron Springs, the fullback. Tony Hill back in the lineup. Butch Johnson for the injured Drew Pearson, Billy Joe Dupree, the tight end. With Donovan Scott, Rafferty, Peterson, and Cooper, the Irish connection on that offensive line. We'll talk about Rafferty, who's had to move to the center spot. Both Dallas centers injured this year. Dorsett. First play from scrimmage, Dorsett reels off 16 yards. Tony Dorsett, we talked about him earlier, how much Dallas depends on his quickness. Look at the great balance as he just flies over the top of that intended tackle, streaks downfield. Big game, big pickup for them. That, that helps to get off on the right foot offensively. Dorsett, the leading rusher in the National Football Conference with 772 yards. Big average this year, 5.7 a carry. Not much this time, just a couple of yards before number 73, Bob Baumhauer, 6'5", giant nose tackle can make the stop. Here is that Miami Dolphin defense with betters and the veteran Den Herter on the outside. Baumhauer over center. Brudzinski from the Rams. Ernie Roan, A.J. Dewey, Larry Gordon, the set of linebackers. Don McNeil after an injury back in at left corner with Gerald Small on the right side. And the Blackwood boys from Texas, Lyle and Glenn, the brother safety condom, uh, condom combination at center. A screen to Dorsett. Great blocking. And he's fumbles. And Miami has it at the 42-yard line. Gerald Small picked up the loose football, number 48, after a fine gain of 20 yards. Excellent play acting on the part of the quarterback. But also a fine run by Dorsett. Unfortunately, you got to hang on to that football. We welcome those fans who have just seen an exciting finish as the Buffalo Bills on a late field goal beat Denver 9 to 7 here in Irving Texas Texas Stadium Dick Kenberg Merlin Olson no score Miami took the kickoff marched into Dallas territory then had to punt and Tony Dorsett has just fumbled after a 20 yard run with a screen pass Miami recovering at its 42 Woodley outside and that's Duriel Harris after slipping a tackle, he's to the 43-yard line. Mike Downs made the stop, a 14-yard gain. Miami Dolphins operating without uh, Nat Moore, but they do have their bona fide Duriel Harris. Watch the quickness of Harris. He's going to slip away right here from 32 Thurman and get downfield, wisely electing to go to the ground as the traffic gets a little fierce. 
with that Buffalo victory Miami needs a win today to stay a game and a half in front of the Bills so a loss to Dallas and Buffalo would be just a half game back in the AFC East Tony Nathan and he burrows to the 39 yard line it'll be second down and six no score nine minutes left first quarter here at Irving Texas let's go to Bryant in New York Dick, out in Oakland, the Raiders have drawn first blood in their rematch with the Kansas City Chiefs. Mark Wilson, a six-yard strike to Morris Bradshaw, point after his good. The silver and black of Oakland out in front of Kansas City, 7-love in the first. Dick? All right, Bryant, the Raiders, after that three-game shutout skein, trying to pick up their second win in a row. Franklin, the fullback, moves out on a wing. Fake to Nathan. Intercepted by Walls. And he's to the 38-yard line. That's the seventh interception of the year for Walls, tying the Dallas rookie record. What amazing reflexes by the young rookie. This pass really zipped. And watch Walls, that ball on top of him, before he can even have a good shot of looking at it just springs up and leaps out of there. He wants some extra yardage. Time Miami pass receiver Nat Moore not in uniform today. He's in the role of cheerleading for Harris and Cephalo and company. So turnovers and now it's Dallas's turn at its 38 yard line. That's Butch Johnson in motion. Great time for White. Drew Pearson out of bounds at the 37 yard line. Check that Butch Johnson with a catch and Ernest Roan made the tackle. Johnson in this game to do what Pearson normally does. Pearson jammed in the eye last week against the Rams. Spent a couple of days in the hospital and and Johnson getting a chance to start and taking advantage of it here. Little crossing pattern and the critical thing here. Danny White has all day to throw that football and that's what he'll do with it if you give him that amount of time. Beautiful throw as Johnson has his 17th catch of the year a 30 yard pass play and Dallas with its deepest penetration at the Miami 37 no score first quarter eight and a half minutes left Dorsett and a solid hit at the 34 yard line betters and Roan double teaming on that tackle Ernest Roan probably playing better than any of the linebackers on that Miami team. But you can see the problems that both of these teams are going to have if they give the opposing quarterback time to throw the football. Both of these secondaries have had problems during the season. Miami has benched one of their safety men, Don Besselu, put in uh, Lyle Blackwood, who is a journeyman at best, and they've had to bring McNeil off the sick list to try and shore up that corner position. They need to get a rush on the quarterback. the 23 yard line just another first down for Dallas as Dorsett put on more moves than a belly dancer I just kept jaking to the outside and using the great speed he leaves an awful lot of defensive players wondering where he went gifted athlete that has really learned to perform consistently under all kinds of situations Dorsett already with 32 yards rushing on just four carries from the 23 of Miami. And this time it's Ron Springs with a carry and nothing at all there. Bob Brzezinski, number 59 from Ohio State, acquired by Miami from the Rams, was the key man on the tackle. Brzezinski, by his own admission, has had two horrible games back to back. Really couldn't understand it. He is a he is a gifted athlete, and he is a very tough competitor. Extremely frustrated as at his performance these past two weeks. Would like to get over it today. Drew Pearson, the all-time Cowboy pass receiver, is in the game. They use three wide receivers. Pearson far left. Johnson in the slot left. Tony Hill to the right. set and it was read well by the defense 75 Doug better has got a piece of it and Brzezinski made the tackle but it was betters who slowed down Dorset and an excellent reaction by 73 Baumhauer coming out from the nose betters has certainly improved at that end position 
big, strong bull on a, on a pass rush and probably plays the run better than anyone on that defensive line except Baumhauer. Said betters from Nevada, Reno. They said they gambled when they picked him. <laughs> it was a good roll of the dice for Miami. Third and nine out of the shotgun, Danny White. on the play. Saldi, a very versatile tight end, has not caught many passes the first half of this season. Talked to him yesterday. He said, I think maybe I'm going to get him the second half of the season. Well, he gets a big one here all by himself. One of the linebackers just dropping a coverage. No one there to tackle Saldi until he's out of bounds. We welcome those fans who have just seen the Redskins beat the New England Patriots 24-22. Texas Stadium, the first serious threat of this game in the first quarter, 6-20 remaining. Dallas first and goal, Dorsett. Finally out of bounds at the five-yard line. Don McNeil, 28, spearheaded the defensive charge. The offensive show in this first half, all Dallas. Tony Dorsett uh, rushing extremely well. Danny White, three for three for 55 yards. Dorsett now 38 yards rushing. The great Heisman star out of the University of Pittsburgh. He rushed for at least 1,000 yards all four years at Pitt. He's rushed for 1,000 yards all four years with Dallas. That's an all-time NFL record, first four years, always over 1,000. And he's well on his way again this year. He's over 800 already, counting that today. Two tight ends, Saldi and Dupree, along with Cosby. They use a three set, and Ron Springs bolts in for a touchdown. Billy Joe Dupree coming to the inside as a blocker, a trap blocker. Watch Springs duck in behind the block right there and just explode into that end zone. He's been their favorite in short yardage situations. He shows you why on that play. An obvious mix up short yardage or on the extra point here. The wrong people on the field. Still 18 seconds on the 32nd clock as Raphael Septien out of Charlie Waters hold to try the point after. Clock down to nine seconds. Septien the leading scorer in the NFL. And with one second left, he nails it. Eight plays, 62 yards, and the Cowboys are on the board first. Timeout at Texas Stadium. Six minutes, 10 seconds left. First quarter, Dallas 7, Miami nothing. The Cowboys take the early lead, 7 to nothing. Dick Enberg and Merlin Olsen at Texas Stadium. A very impressive drive. Very impressive. It's obvious the Cowboys have worked to eliminate the sloppiness that hurt them last week, even though they won that game against the Rams. Tom Landry was not a very happy coach. Septien's kick taken by Walker, and he will not take it out. Walker, who returned 90 yards for a touchdown earlier this year for the Dolphins in a game against Buffalo. So Septien does his job well. Boy, he's on quite a run. 17 out of 18 field goal attempts this year. Ben Nagajanian, his coach. Ben has put uh, on the market a new book called The Kicking Game that uh, uses Septien as the model pretty good model. He's also been nursing a sore groin and some feel that perhaps the fact that he has not been able to kick at full strength has helped him to concentrate on the fundamentals and thereby gain more consistency as a kicker. Like a pitcher with a sore arm who can't throw his heart has to learn how to improve his control and work on other pitches. Handsome David Woodley is team behind seven to nothing. Little reverse Nathan Tony Nathan from Alabama gained seven yards before Harvey Martin can trip him up. Nathan with a 7.7 average coming into this game, and that is absolutely amazing. And you saw there the kind of foot speed. He's one of the few backs in the NFL that can show you the same kind of foot speed as Tony Dorsett. And you notice the bulge around his waist? We talked earlier about flak jackets. He is also wearing one, also has rib problems and a lot of pain. 
Second down and three. Nathan again. And appears to have enough for a first down. D.D. Lewis along with Mike Downs to make the tackle. Nathan, it was a third round pick in 1979 by Miami. There are six running backs, Nathan Vigorito, Giaquinto, Franklin Howell, and Hill. You take all of their career yardage in the NFL and it won't even make a dent in don't Tony Dorsett's. It's a very, very young group of running backs for Miami. Franklin to the 34 yard line a gain of about three we welcome those who watch the Cleveland Browns outscore the Baltimore Coats 42 to 28 here on NBC Dick Hamburg with Merlin Olsen at Texas Stadium we played four well to the four minute mark in the first quarter Dallas has scored after an interception by rookie Everson Walls his seventh of the year leading the NFL they marched 62 yards and eight plays with Ron Spring scoring on a five yard run Miami, the ensuing kickoff, have taken it to their own 34, where it's second down and seven. A little and confusion. Timeout call by Woodley. Woodley, who is protecting a cracked rib with that jacket, the flak jacket, and Merlin Olsen had a chance to procure it and demonstrate just what that device and how it is built. David Woodley are wearing flak jackets today. Jackets which will protect injured ribs. Jacket is a hard uh, plastic exterior and a foam and air interior. You can see you can take just about as tough a blow as you want without injuring those ribs that are sore in both cases. You better believe that when you've got cracked ribs, separated cartilage, any of you out there watching this broadcast, listening, know how painful that can be. Well, there's, there's one gentleman, Tony Nathan, and there's another one, Doug Woodley, protecting those ribs. You've got to believe that's David Woodley. You've got to believe that's awfully tough to go full speed with that kind of pain. 34-yard line, second down and seven. Harris and Cephalo both to the right, and that's Joe Rose splitting left. A draw to Nathan. Randy White, 54, and 50 D.D. Lewis collaborate on the stop short of the first down. It'll be third and about three. Miami Dolphins trying to get that running game going, trying to balance it out as uh, the Cowboys did early, mixing their plays well. But you got to believe that Woodley would really like to get it in the air. He's a specialist in throwing that long ball. You saw 32 Tom Vigorito, a rookie from Virginia, bring in the play. Nathan, he's at 50 into the Dallas 49, goes Tony Nathan, and a first down. Dickerson and Thurman made the tackle, so the Dolphins crossed up the Dallas defense looking for the pass. We talk about the explosiveness of Dorsett and the fact that this man is one who can show the same kind of explosive reaction. Charlie Waters just blown right off his feet and Tony Nathan knows what to do when you give him that much room. He's going to get that first down and then a bunch. 14 yards for Nathan. From the Dallas 49 with the Cowboys in front 7 nothing late in the first quarter. Woodley going long for Cephalo and inadvertent contact no penalty as Benny Barnes a veteran from Stanford was covering Joe Rose California graduate very close to a penalty call by the official who reached for his pocket and then decided not to call it decided it was indeed inadvertent but that's the kind that can often be called and will often be called on the defensive player. Barnes was involved in that very critical Super Bowl contact that crossed legs with Lynn Swan and a penalty that was so important in the Steelers victory over and almost Dallas. the same kind of setup exactly Dick. second down and ten 
Ronnie Lee, the tight end, shifting left. And it's Nathan running left. Good second effort by Nathan, and he's close to a first down at the Dallas 39. It appeared he had about three yards, and finally Brunig able to apply enough pressure to trip him up. You want to have the feeling that you're right down there in the action? Here you come. Tony Nathan coming right into your living room and showing you the kind of balance as well as strength. He's hit and still manages to stay on his feet for an extra six yards. That, that's the time that you know you've got a great back when you can watch them make that kind of yardage after that first initial hit after they should be on the ground. First down for Miami. A minute 45 left first quarter. Andre Franklin. Not much there. Randy White. Bob Brunig there to make the tackle and plenty of other white shirts to help out after a gain of a yard or two. Dick, we talked about uh, the secondary, the problems that Landry has there. That means that when you're having problems in a defensive secondary, you've got to put a lot of pressure on your defensive linemen. And they have really gotten some tremendous performance from Too Tall and Randy White and John Dutton and Harvey Martin. They put about as much squeeze on a quarterback as any foursome in the NFL. Woodley. And a nice catch by Duriel Harris as he rolls out of bounds shy of the 29. That'll be short of a first down as Woodley is now four for seven. Check that Tony Nathan not Duriel Harris and Nathan wearing number 22 and of course for you longtime fans of the Dolphins at 22 worn by Mercury Morris. Some at home watching might feel that this was a bad throw thrown low but actually that's the best place to put that football. You've got defenders behind the receiver and that ball thrown low has no chance for anyone except the intended receiver. Nathan who came into the game with 18 catches third and a yard. Andra Franklin stopped then surged forward and that's going to be very close. You saw Steve Howell 36 the other fullback 230 pounds lead him through the hole. Bob Brunig Steve Wilson there on the tackle. No, no. It looks a little bit short. It'd be an interesting choice for Don Shula whether to try for the field goal or try for the uh, first down. Shula obviously looking to see how much it's short. Wouldn't be surprised to see a measurement here. This would be the 11th play of this drive. They are going to measure it. I talked to Woodley last night uh, about uh, the difference in his performance now as opposed to a year ago. He has less than a full year of starting in the NFL. And we watched him in his first game against Buffalo almost a year ago now. And I said, how much different is your preparation? He said, well, now... There you see the less than a foot on the first down. He said, I, there are so many more things that I can see after the snap of the ball, maybe 200%. I said, is that it? He said, no. He said, the, the amazing thing is the number of things I see before the snap of the ball. He said, you can, I eliminate so many things before I have to worry about what's happening after the snap. So as he comes up to that line of scrimmage and moves under center, he's going to school. That computer should work. And the Dolphins are going to go for it with fourth and a foot. The Dallas 29. Nathan, he didn't make it. Number 32, Dennis Thurman with a tackle, and the defense of Dallas has held. A gamble by Don Shula early. Nathan looked like he had a chance to spin to the inside there and perhaps get the first down. When you've got critical yardage, you cannot go outside. 7-0 Dallas, late first quarter. In New York at Chicago Soldiers Field. The Bears have jumped out ahead of the San Diego Chargers. Matt Suey taking it in from seven yards out, point after his good. And the one and six Bears lead the five and two Chargers in the early going. Nick? We have the defense stopped Woodley and the Dolphins on that last fourth down try. We talk about getting square to that line of scrimmage. As soon as he turned, there was no chance for him on that play, Dick. 
White. And he finds the veteran Drew Pearson, number 88. Pearson, who is just a handful of catches away from the 400 catch mark in his brilliant career out of Tulsa. Would appear that uh, Danny White is smoking today. He's four for four here in the first half and just knocking them down with his passing game. But part of the credit for that, Dick, the fact that they have run the ball so effectively. Tom Rafferty, the center, converted guard. He's got a lot of responsibility out there. Says it's most difficult in adjustment to the running game, not the passing game. Got to snap the ball and then go to blocking. Entries to Shaw and Fitzgerald at center, forcing Rafferty to take that spot. Dorsett, just as it appeared, he had room outside. A good low tackle by Don McNeil, number 28, was returned to the line of another draft out of Alabama by Don Shula. He's going to have to bear Bryant's uh, boys. 28th in the course, Stevenson are two other former Crimson Tide stars, as is Bob Baumhauer. That's the end of the first quarter. It's Dallas here at Texas Stadium. This is Brian Dumble in New York in Atlanta. The Giants have just upset the Atlanta Falcons. 9-20 in overtime. Joe Danello making good from 44 yards out. The Giants go to 5-3, 27-24 over Atlanta. Texas Stadium sold out again today. The 38th consecutive sellout here for the Dallas Cowboys, and they are sold out rest of the home schedule this year. Start the second quarter, third and inches for Danny White, just inside his 40. Dorsett tripped up for a loss as they gambled that he might go outside, and 42, Lyle Blackwood, the veteran from TCU, acquired from the Colts to join his brother Glenn Blackwood in the safety spots, made the tackle. First quarter official statistics, very close. Very close, except for time of possession, in which the Dolphins have a surprising edge. But, of course, the big difference in this game, uh, the fact that the Cowboys able to string that long drive together, not make any mistakes, put that touchdown on the board. And also the fine stand at the 29-yard line. Two shots by Miami on third and fourth down to make a yard. They couldn't do it. Danny White with Tom Vigorito, and they fake it, and White may or may not. No, I don't think he made it. He He's did Mark not. Short. He's Mark Short. He did that last week. He ran against L.A. last week and then kicked the ball beyond the line of scrimmage, was not penalized for that. I think he has the green light back there, and he may have tried to run just once too often here, although took the bad snap. I think he felt he might have had a chance to have it blocked. He said, the heck with it. I think I can make it on a run. But watch where his knee goes down, right there. And that's the spot they'll mark the football. At the 39, you see Ken Poole, 78, come in, the rookie defensive lineman. He may have felt that Poole had an angle on him. And a fine defensive play made by the Dolphins as White goes down at the 39 and with it gives Miami the ball. Here's that gamble play by Danny White. You see the bad snap and White take a quick look at the top. And let's see who gets in there to make the stop on him right there. Some alert play. Steve Howell, number 36, the man that got over there. A.J. Dewey, 77, coming in there. Ken Poole, 78. But that's alert defensive play. Got to believe that they watched the films of that Ram game last week. So Miami with a break at the Dallas 39. Good protection for Woodley. Right through the arm to the tight end Ronnie Lee, number 86. D.D. Lewis was the closest cowboy. Let's check on the other scores in the NFL today. Buffalo rallied to beat Denver and stays within a game and a half of Miami. Washington, the Redskins, 24, New England, 22. So the Skins have won two of their last three. Cleveland outscored Baltimore, 42-28. It was Philadelphia over Tampa Bay, 20-10. to 10. That game was tied at 10 in the fourth quarter. Complete. Woodley trying to find Tony Nathan and again D.D. Lewis on the coverage. Other scores in the NFL. The Giants and there's an upset over Atlanta 27 24 and the Giants playing great football. St. Louis beat Minnesota after Minnesota defeated Philadelphia last week in this topsy turvy NFL year. The Lions outscored Green Bay 31 27. 
Oh, look at that one in the fourth quarter. The Saints had the Bengals shut out 17 nothing. That's the same Cincinnati team that blistered Pittsburgh last week. Oh, my, what a year. Third and ten for Miami. And Vigorito slammed into Randy White, and you don't move very far when White hits you. Randy White had just made a hard move to the inside on his pass rush. And I don't know if he even saw Vigorito until he buried him. He was playing with Charlie Waters three year old son yesterday at practice and just lifting up the young boy the lad started to cry I mean Randy White can't hug softly he said it took me about two years to get this kid to say hello to me I'm gonna have to work another two to get him to come back Oros who's had great success dropping the ball inside the five yard line on his punts unable on this occasion into the end zone Dallas survives that gamble on the punt and they'll take over at the 20 yard line leading seven nothing early second quarter. That blue drape is masking number 20 Mel Renfro who will join those other great Cowboys Chuck Howley Don Meredith Bob Lilly and Don Perkins in the Cowboy Ring of Fame will be honored at halftime today. Dorsett gains about four or five yards Tony Dorsett who was named in this past week by the custom Taylor's Guild as the best dressed athlete Alexander Haig. Mikhail Bereshnikov and Don Rickles was named the best dressed comedian. <laughs> I got to talk to him about that. Well, I don't I don't know. I, I think his teammates, they don't care how he looks as long as it gets it into the end zone. He can wear anything he wants to wear. Looks very good then. Yeah. Second down and six. Tony Hill to the left. Butch Johnson to the right. Springs who by the way wearing number 20 that was Mel Renfro's number in his great all pro years here with the Cowboys it's third and five Larry Gordon made the stop for Miami a number of the great Cowboy players here to help uh, honor their teammate Mel Renfro I had a chance to visit with Lily and Perkins and Howie among, among others uh, just before their broadcast must be uh, 25 or 30 of their players uh, here to uh, help honor one of their own I think that's a a nice program that's been started here by Tex Schramm. Good way of recognizing some of the past heroes of this great Dallas organization. Danny White has been perfect thus far. Again protected well. First down, Ron Springs at the 32. Don Besselu made the tackle. A perfect throw by White. Talking about rebuilt secondaries, the need to get pressure on a quarterback. The reason that Danny White is perfect is that he has had time to throw the football and has made the most of it. Throwing there to his backs, both of these teams mixing receivers well. They don't just throw it to the wide receivers anymore. The backs get just as many as they do. Well, in fact, Springs, you saw, had 24 catches coming into this game, is the leading receiver for Cowboys this year. Tony Hill and another first down at the 43 yard line. The thrill Tony Hill an All American at Stanford 11 yards on that catch. Tony uh, hurt a good part of the season really gives them some added punch when you have three wide receivers of the quality that Dallas can put on the field in that kind of situation. You better have some good defensive backs to cover. First down at the. Second quarter, 11 minutes left in the half. 7-0 Dallas. Springs on a screen. Broke one tackle as Gordon unable to bring him down. But was secured by Baumhauer, 73, who chased the play from his inside position. Bob Baumhauer, 6-5. And he's not the prototype at all of that nose guard. He's uh, as tall as any man playing that position. I was talking to Mo Scary, who's the defensive line coach for the Miami Dolphins he said the interesting thing about Baumhauer is even though he's a big man he gets down low to the ground I'm sure that Tom Landry respects the performance of that big nose tackle too they have not made much yardage up the middle they've been outside a good part of the day second down Bo Camper was in in a hurry but it was 
Dorsett with the ball, and he's wrapped up by Larry Gordon, shy of the 50-yard line. It'll be about third and a long three. You see the 50 once on the back of the helmets of the Dolphins, and most of you know by now, but that's in memory of their teammate Rusty Chambers, who was killed in an auto accident in July last summer. And they have devoted themselves to their teammate Chambers in this 1981 year. Third and a long three. Drew Pearson comes in. He and Johnson are both to the left with Hill to the right. Again, good protection. White struggling, trying to lurch forward for the first down. It's going to be close. From this angle, it appears to be short. Ernest Roan, 55, got him from the ankles. Landry with a little longer fourth down situation than Shula elected to gamble with earlier. Will kick it away. Playing the odds here. Not willing to take a chance with that seven point lead. And rightfully so. He has the advantage going early here. Leading seven nothing. The dean of NFL coaches. Landry has white back in punt formation. Tom Vigorito is at the ten yard line for Miami. Beautiful kick. It's going to go out of bounds as they mark it around the 10. Now, actually, not quite that good. The 13 yard line. It'll be Miami's ball when we return. The Dolphins trailing the Cowboys 7 0, second quarter. Statistics the officials have not been a factor in the game thus far. And that's a drastic <laughs> difference. Cowboys last week, 15 penalties, 11 in the second half, and there were two that were refused. Miami always right at the top and least penalized team least penalized in the NFL last year and again this year so far trailing seven nothing Woodley goes to work this is Andra Franklin and he belts his way out across the 20 yard line a good gain on first down before Mike Downs the rookie from Rice can make the tackle for Dallas Franklin came into this game early a running uh, blocking back and is getting a chance to do a little running they've Fire Nathan to the outside to get a little bit of action out of that Cowboy defense and Franklin is showing you the kind of power that he has tremendous leg and hip power the blocking of course very important on the front wall Ed Newman number 64 the guard who cleared the way for him gave him a little room to come up in there second and short Nathan Doing a good job of spinning away from pressure, and he has a first down at the 27 yard line. D.D. Lewis, the oldest cowboy, and Mike Downs, one of the youngest, teamed up on the tackle. Downs is from Dallas. A great battle going on between number 67, Bob Kuchenberg, and 54, Randy White. White just leaping out of his stance, trying to get to the inside. Kuchenberg stripping him to the ground. It obviously did not pay for White on that occasion because it made room on the outside for the run. And they got good yardage on the play. Nathan down at the 27 yard line after a yard gain or so. It was again Mike Downs. It's interesting about those two free agent rookies in the defensive secondary for Dallas. Downs and Walls, 26 and 24, both picked as a free agent. Both are Dallas natives. And here they are contributing to the team and a rebuilt uh, back line for Dallas. And playing one of the most complicated defenses in all of football. The tendencies and the computer book that they use to prepare themselves for games. I don't even think those two youngsters know how complicated this defense <laughs> is yet. Between them, they have 10 interceptions already this year. Woodley, he's had a man wide open. Was he inbounds? Yes, at the 40-yard line. Cephalo, and that was a touchdown if Woodley could have led him a little farther as Walls was caught about 10 yards away from the receiver, and only because it was thrown short was that not a touchdown. We just talked about the two rookies, Everson Walls. What a great year he's having, but it looks like Cephalo just fools him on that play, gave him a little wiggle to the outside and blew by him. Woodley threw that ball a little short. Watch Cephalo. Watch the move to the outside now that's going to freeze Walls. Little dip to the outside, and Walls lost contact momentarily with him. Now, if that ball had been thrown ahead of Cephalo, it would have been a foot race for the goal line. 
You saw Walls, as soon as the move was made on the replay, slap his hands as if to say, uh-oh, he got me. And it was a 31-yard play. 7-0, oh. Dallas leads Miami at the Cowboy 40. Auction, Woodley. auction play. That's a free ball. And alertly knocked out of bounds by Nathan, and it remains in the Dolphins' possession. Mike Hegman, who's been out of the lineup since the opening game against Washington with a broken arm, is going to be the man who forces the pitch here. The Cowboys haven't had to work on this since they played in the college all-star game, but that's the old college option. Now watch, watch Hegman. <laughs> I think Woodley will think twice about calling that play again. Actually, the coaches on the sideline are the ones that call it. I think they may reconsider. Especially with that cracked rib. Hegman. Yeah, that big touchdown in the Super Bowl against the Steelers in Miami. Nathan, the only remaining back. Second and 11. Wide open. Duriel Harris. And he's all the way to the 10 yard line. Mike Downs, the rookie, makes a tackle. Another 31 yard gain. Ernie Statner, defensive coach for the Dallas Cowboys, said, we'll know right away what they're going to go after. The Miami Dolphins pick your weaknesses and they come after you. They've obviously decided they're going to test Everson Walls and Duriel Harris with a brilliant move. Walls have been beaten deep. They come back and beat him short, and Duriel Harris gets the extra yardage. As Woodley goes to his two outside receivers, Cephalo for 31, and now Harris for 31 yards. Gets about five yards. The Dolphins could make a first down without a touchdown. Uh, they're about 10 yards and a foot from the goal line at the start of this four down series. Downs and Brunig made that tackle. So Howell with five yards. He played at Baylor, replaced Larry Zonka in 1980. Same college backfield with Craig Hawthorne of the Pittsburgh Steelers. In fact, Ronnie Lee, the tight end for Miami, number 86, was also on that Baylor team. You saw the tight end move from one side to the other. They're trying to get D.D. Lewis isolated on Tony Nathan. They knew they would force him in the coverage to go after the back, and that's a mismatch. D.D. in his last year with the Cowboys has lost a little of the speed that made him such a great linebacker early in his career, and they burn him for six right here. was deep in the end zone drawing his own attention from the defense. Eight plays and an 87 yard drive. Von Schaman to try the extra point. Hits the upright no good. Von Schaman who had connected on 70 consecutive point after touchdowns kisses the upright and it deflects no good. Interesting. The extra points are no longer gimmies. This one hits and bounces the wrong way for the Miami Dolphins. Board again. Mark Wilson, his first rushing touchdown of his career, three yards in, making an Oakland 14 to nothing over the Kansas City Chiefs. Now let's go back to Dallas, Dick Enberg, and Merlin Olsen. Thank you, Byron. An 87-yard drive authored by the Miami Dolphins in eight plays. Two key 31-yard passes to Cephalo and Harris set up the five-yard touchdown to Nathan. Deep in the end zone to Ron Fellows, rookie from Missouri, and he'll take the touchback. So Von Schaman had a lot of adrenaline into that kick. <laughs> I was just going to say he took out all his frustration from that missed kick, and it was a good snap and a good hold. I'm sure he just he just kicked it foully, and he took all that pain out on that football. It's an interesting story. He came here from West Berlin in, at the age of 16, and he and his mother started from New York, took a bus to Memphis, had no more money, and hitchhiked mother and son from Memphis to Fort Worth, Texas, and that's how they started here in the United States. 
Dorsett and Springs behind Danny White. who was in motion, then curled over the middle, gains five yards on that throw from White. And Danny White is now 8-4-8 eight eight passing. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. KXAS-TV, Channel 5, Fort Worth, Dallas. Dick Enberg, Merlin Olson, Texas Stadium on a gray, cool, 57-degree afternoon. Dallas Cowboys scored in the first quarter. And Miami's countered with a touchdown here in the second period. Four minutes and 20 seconds left. Missed extra point, the difference. Tony Dorsett. Accelerating outside to the 39-yard line. And a Dallas first down. Lyle Blackwood pushed him out of bounds. Dorsett coming in behind Donovan Scott. And the good blocking right there of number 20, Ron Springs, who threw the last one to spring him. You don't have to get number 33 Dorsett much room. He'll be out of there. Watch Scott pull at the lower part of your screen. Number 68, Scott, going right there into the nose of A.J. Dewey. Dewey unable to get to the outside to be of much help on that play. Scott was named All-Pro last year. His nickname is Pooch. Players say he looks so cuddly. Play action by White, and he's going long for Hill. And almost intercepted. Don McNeil played that brilliantly. Little contact over there, but McNeil recovering well to get in position. McNeil coming back from a hamstring injury has shown us some fine speed. They've tried to get him a couple of times deep, running well there. And I look like, well, Hill is reaching for the football, but he did make contact with McNeil. Again, the official thinking about the possibility of a penalty. That's twice the Cowboys have escaped on possible interference from the offensive side. And that was the first incomplete pass thrown by White. He's eight for nine. Second down, Kim Bocamper, 58, comes in. Then hurt her out in a pass situation for Miami. Dorsett. 42, Lyle Blackwood came up to make the tackle, but not until Dorsett had reeled off another gain of 10 yards. The Miami Dolphins playing situation defenses. They send number 58, Kim Bocamper, into the game as a pass rusher. They're playing for the pass, and Danny White flips it out to his main man, Tony Dorsett, who says, hey, we're not going to pass. We're going to run it, and we're going to pick ourselves a first down if we can. He almost got it. They're going to have a third down and just about a foot and a half to go. Mike Kozlowski, number 40, comes into the defensive backfield for Miami. set all the way to the 35 yard line what a move by Dorset when it comes to running the football there is no substitute for speed Dorset just started up into the line saw an opening to the outside now watch the acceleration the vision right there to see the opening at the outside and then the quick acceleration he's around that corner before anyone could get out there to challenge him and of course it's been well publicized that when Dorsett gains 100 yards the Dallas Cowboys invariably win they've lost only once when he has gained 100 and he's up to 83 already in this first half today play action by White in trouble Doug Betters makes the play. 75 Betters logs the first sack of the game. A big sack, too. It, would, it appeared that White had a chance to duck inside, elected instead to continue to retreat. Watch it yourself. Now, Betters is being forced to the outside by number 61, Cooper. It looks to me that if, if Danny had stepped up right there, although he did have pressure from the other side, he might have avoided that sack. You wonder why it's not a fumble? The whistle had already been blown. And Betters forces fumbles in the last eight years, Merlin, or last three years, he's forced eight fumbles and very close to one there. Down to the two-minute warning, and White. Did he call time? I think he's looking at yes, that 30-second clock. He's had some problems. Uh, they had three penalties last week for taking too much time. They spent this whole week trying to avoid that kind of penalty. I think Danny White either saw something he didn't like or that 30-second clock was running out on him. 
didn't want to be penalized. So a 2-0-2 remaining right at the two-minute warning. The Cowboys spend one of their timeouts. Tom Landry, all during this week, was sending the plays in in practice. Uh, it was frustrated at the inability of their offense to get the plays off on time and wanted to make sure they didn't have that problem uh, this time. The man in the hat there, the cap, on the left-hand side of your screen, Bill Arnsparger, former head coach, New York Giants, and Shula's trusted defensive aide. And I'll tell you, both of these coaches have incredible staffs. We welcome those of you who have watched a major upset today, the New Orleans Saints beating the Cincinnati Bengals 17-7. Well, it's just uh, so difficult to understand some of the scores week to week after Cincinnati with that tremendous victory over Pittsburgh last week. We're down this week. There's Bill Arnsparger, former coach of the New York Giants, after being a lead assistant for Shula, has returned home to Miami working under Shula, and they're quite a team, aren't they? A fine team. They don't understand what happened to their defense, so they started so well, and then they went into a three-game tailspin, gave up 990 yards passing, 10 passing touchdowns, and they finally are getting their act back together. They got their hands full with Dallas today. Second and long for the Cowboys, who lead in the game 7-6 to six from the Miami 49. Down the middle. What a catch by Drew Pearson the 25 yard line and this is a man they didn't think would play today he was poked in the eye last week was in the hospital a couple of days earlier this week that ball looked like a sure interception and Pearson grabbed the ball and took the hit and held on close to a first down a two minute warning a one point game less than two minutes left Dallas leading Miami seven to six and a tremendous effort by Drew Pearson on that last play the thing that separates wide receivers aside from speed and moves is concentration. Watch the concentration on the ball here. He'll be hit just as he touches the ball right there. Glenn Blackwood just levels him on the spot, but he would not take his eyes off of that football. Another replay of the same shot. Now watch it here. Smashed as he gets his fingers on that ball, but won't give it up. Blackwood couldn't believe that he didn't have the interception. Third and one and Springs going to be close. They may have to measure. Center that Miami defense making the play. It'll all depend on where they mark that football, and the officials are standing perhaps inside of where that first down would be marked. Early in the game, for those of you who were not with us in the first quarter, Miami had two shots with less than a yard to go at the Dallas 29 yard line, and the Cowboys held them on downs. Would be interesting to see if. If Landry, given the same situation, would also go for the first down here rather than to try the field goal. Certainly no advantage to punting the ball from there. Well, he's got a man who's been hot, Septien, in case he has to go to the field goal. Septien has a Dallas record nine in a row, and he's missed only one of 18 this year. Let's see if it's going to be even a factor. And that one from 40 yards out, he's been deadly. He's it's short. He's short. Yeah, he's short. Well, Mr. Shula decided to go for it. Texas Stadium, we're in the final two minutes and the Cowboys are going to go for it. Their fans like that here. You hear them firing up. I wonder if they'll feel the same way if they don't make that one. Fourth down and inches. The Cowboys lead by one, trying to get more. One minute, 40 seconds left. First half. Dorsett, first down. Tom Landry gambles, and when you have a Tony Dorsett, he makes a lot of those chances look mighty good. And Dorsett gives the Cowboys a first down at the 21 yard line. The clock is running 109 108. Remember the Cowboys used one timeout in this first half have only two remaining. You saw Landry saying let's pick it up. Let's move it. Let's get it in the end zone. He's going touchdown Butch Johnson. one to push Johnson for a Dallas score. Don Shula, you saw the look of frustration. 
obviously a very happy sideline. Dallas pleased at getting that additional six points. They'd like to get the extra point here and go in with an eight-point lead at halftime. Step the end, adds the extra point, and the Cowboys have a 14 to 6 lead. Butch Johnson has been the most productive receiver on the Cowboys staff throughout the first half of this season. Again, the discipline of that inside route, but a perfect pass from Danny White. Johnson did what he had to do, sucked it in and did his little dance. 55 seconds left in the half. Playoff Willie Nelson. And the Cowboys have brought the sellout crowd to its feet with a touchdown. Less than a minute remaining in the half. 14 to 6 to score. And Septian again drills it to Fulton Walker, who will not take it out. Let's go back to the touchdown and follow Butch Johnson. Danny White appeared to see a little seam in the zone, and Johnson made a little adjustment himself. And a perfect throw just beyond the defender, Gerald Small, 48, and into the arms of Johnson for the score. And then the California Quake. The other thing that Danny White did was to look the defense off, looking first to his right and only coming back when he was ready to fire that football. 21-yard pass play. First touchdown today for Danny White. Woodley with 55 seconds left and all three timeouts. He's seven for 12 passing. One touchdown, one intercepted. He's only been intercepted three times all year, counting the one today. Screen. Tommy Vigarito goes out of bounds with a first down at the 31-yard line. He got a little help from the umpire. He had all he could handle to get that football. Looked like he was going to run right over the top of the umpire. Good play by Vigarito. Watch it now at the bottom of your screen. As that ball is thrown, you'll see Vigarito coming right into the picture, and he's going to catch that football right on top of the umpire, who does manage to get out of the way. Good play by Vigarito. And Tom Hensley, the umpire, to get it out of the way of that contact. Five seconds to gain 11 yards. Vigarito heading for the sidelines. And that saves a timeout as he gains five more out to the 36-yard line. Dennis Thurman, number 32, the former University of Southern California star, made the play. Thurman really a safety who has been moved to cornerback because of injury problems. Called one of Charlie's Angels, but he is a veteran player, but has played most of his time at, uh, at safety rather than at cornerback. Done a good job for the Cowboys. Said he gained 10 pounds. He's up to 180 and really <laughs> glad, glad he has all that meat now. He needs it. Woodley. And Rose makes a juggling catch at the 50-yard line. Joel Rose, number 80, 32. They're not using a timeout, surprisingly, and they've got three left. And finally, call time with 29 seconds left. What a play by Rose. Woodley under tremendous pressure from from White on that play. Put it on target. Now watch the juggling act here. Again, great concentration. Actually, the ball thrown behind him. He used the left hand to bat it in the air to himself. And a first down at midfield. 29 seconds left. Furnished as a public service by the National Football League. Woodley to Cephalo. Out of bounds. No catch. 23 seconds left as Woodley had a man open, but let him out of bounds with that throw. No, no, that was not a foul. Winding down to the final seconds, Cephalo has to get two feet down in bounds. Watch his feet. Both clearly out of bounds. No chance on that one. Dennis Thurman there to give him a little bump. You saw that statistic on Dorsett, 23 and 1. The Cowboys, when he gains 100 yards rushing, well, he's only 17 from that in the first half today. And Dallas indeed leads 14 to 6. I'm running out on Miami. It's a screen to Nathan. 
And Anthony Dickerson, there's not many linebackers that could make that play, but Dickerson, the second fastest cowboy, and was able to track down Nathan at the 45. Timeout Miami. Foot speed important in two directions. Danny, or Randy White giving Woodley all the pressure in the world. Woodley's quickness allows him to get the pass off, but watch the acceleration of Anthony Dickerson. Leaped right off his feet. We told you earlier, the, the only cowboy who can beat Dickerson in a 10-yard sprint is Tony Dorsett. Reminds me a bit of young Thomas Henderson when he was with the Cowboys with that 9-7 speed. Right, right. Speaking of Tom Henderson, we'd certainly like to wish him uh, continued recovery. Of course, he became a member of this Dolphin team, earned himself a spot on the roster after having a lot of problems and overcoming them, and says he's going to come back and play for Don Shula. Dickerson, who is a licensed florist, or is that <laughs> is that the antithesis of football player on Sunday? And he waters his petunias on Monday. Well, he's going to earn himself a starting spot if he keeps playing like that. Very difficult for a linebacker, and they talk about the difficulty of working into this defense. The Cowboys have always believed that the best way to get people into that lineup was make them earn it, put them through a, a period of probation. And Dickerson is doing exactly that, playing mostly on passing downs right now, but certainly showing the kind of skills that will earn him a job very shortly. Just 12 seconds left in the half. Woodley would like to at least get the Dolphins in field goal range. Fumble. Harvey Martin forced the fumble. Woodley recovers with eight seconds left. Martin coming around the outside with those long arms, able to reach back and snatch the football right out of the hands of young David Woodley, working on John Gessler over there on the left-hand side. Reminds me of a play way back, Leon Hart with the Lions, and I think it was against the 49ers. The 49er quarterback who reared back the pass, came around the backside, took it right out of his hands, and went for a touchdown. Kept right on going. We followed boxer Johnny Bumpus. It was our pleasure to call one of his fights as a Golden Glove champion and Olympic trials champion. And now as a young pro, he gets a title shot. He'll be fighting Willie Rodriguez for the USBA Junior Welterweight Championship next Saturday on an NBC Sports World exclusive at 4 o'clock Eastern time. You'll also see on Sports World aerial athletes testing their skills and the tricky wins. Sierra Nevada National Hang Gliding Championships. That's all next Saturday on NBC Sports World. Well, now with three seconds left, Miami can go for the long pass and just hope that they might get a ball deflected and a cheap touchdown, but it's desperation time now. That last play was the key. Woodley was trying to get 15 yards or so and get Von Schaumann a chance at a field goal. We will either choose to go for that desperation play or they may just choose to run out the clock here with that much time they... I think they'll go for it. She was a gambler. He already proved that early in the uh, first half here, going for the fourth and less than a yard. The gamble that backfired on him. Landry came back, made the same kind of gamble, and it paid off for him. And that's kind of the story of this first half, isn't it, Dick? No the fact that the Cowboys have taken advantage of their opportunities. And, of course, the missed extra point could play very importantly in the outcome as Von Schaumann hit the upright. So from the Miami 44-yard line, they moved from three seconds back to eight seconds. It's fourth down and about 17. Now it's conceivable the Dolphins could get a first down if the man gets out of bounds and still another play. But they line up as Shula looking at the clock. Points to the scoreboard. They have all three men. Rose. Elmer Bailey and Cephalo to the right. Dariel Harris to the left. Shula wants, wants an explanation of the clock. I think what he's saying is if he'd known there were eight seconds, he may have elected to punt the football away rather than three seconds. Now it's five seconds. Now he's going to punt it. Now he doesn't want to give the Cowboys a chance to, uh, to have a play, and I don't blame him. They figured they could eat up three seconds before they threw the pass, but they might not be able to do that with eight seconds. And obviously then Dallas would get the ball to 44 and would have a chance at a long field goal. So Oros apparently will punt it away. No one back for Dallas so that ball just trickling down and will help Oros's 
average for the year as they'll let it go right to the one inch line. In an incredible first half where not a single penalty was called, the Dallas Cowboys of the NFC have the lead over the Miami Dolphins of the AFC at the intermission. It's 14 to 6. Common. And James Jones in the end zone is going to take it out. To the 20. And out to the 26-yard line goes Jones. Dwight Stevenson made the tackle, number 57. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Dallas Cowboys and the National Football League is prohibited. So Dallas leading 14 to 6. Danny White calls the plays with him in the backfield. Tony Dorsett, who had a big first half running the ball. Dorsett nearly 100 yards, and White was brilliant throwing it. 10 out of 11 passing, including a touchdown. Ron Springs, and he's smothered in that aquamarine blue of the Miami Dolphins. A Cowboy offensive set with White at quarterback, Dorsett and Springs, who just carried the ball in the backfield. Tony Hill and Butch Johnson for the injured Drew Pearson, although Pearson did see duty in the first half. Billy Joe Dupree, the tight end. Pat Donovan, Herb Scott, the All-Pro last year. Tom Rafferty has moved from guard. Kurt Peterson, the backup, is now at right guard. And Jim Cooper, the right tackle. Second down, nine. to Dorsett, trapped that way, reverses his field, and makes good yardage out to the 39. Bob Brzezinski and Don McNeil get him out of bounds. A 10-yard gain for Dorsett. Dorsett thumped as he went out of bounds, rolled all the way into one of the benches. You'll see it here. Brzezinski giving him a little shove. Again, the advantage of the kind of pure speed that Dorsett can utilize here he simply outlegs everyone gets to the sideline now watch the bump right here that's Don McNeil actually that gives him a shove watch what happens at the end of that roll ends up sliding right into the bench knocking one of the big cases away on the sideline happily not injured back on the field well, that, pretty helmet, tough. that helmet paid off there he now has 96 yards rushing in this game And first down, it springs to the 40-yard line, a short gain. Miami's defense aligned this way. They use the basic 3-4. Doug Betters, Bob Baumhauer in the middle, and veteran Vern Denherter, very tough against the run. Brodzinski, Roan, good pass defender. A.J. Dewey moved to a linebacker spot this year, and Larry Gordon. Don McNeil back from injury and Gerald Small at the corners and the brothers Blackwood, Lyle, and Glenn at safety. Tim Bocamper has gone in on this passing down in pace of uh, Denherter. White incomplete intended for Butch Johnson at the Miami 47 and well covered by Don McNeil who had help from one of the safeties, Lyle Blackwood. You talked about the change from Lineman to linebacker for number 77, A.J. Dewey. Dewey still learning about the passing game. Not quite as comfortable as he was in the physical game on the line of scrimmage, but gets back into his zone, gets a piece of that football, gets a piece of the receiver, and I think if he could have gotten his head up, might have had a chance to intercept that football. Third down. As Danny White, that's only the second pass that he's missed. From the shotgun, they have linebackers coming. Almost intercepted by Mike Koslowski, number 40, but even at that, it was in the hands of Jay Soldi. Koslowski from Colorado, who went to junior college on a volleyball scholarship. Brother Glenn is a freshman flanker at Brigham Young University. And Danny White, after a near-perfect first half, he was 10 of 11 for 137 yards in the first half, has come out, thrown a couple and missed them, is now 10 for 13. Figueroa back at a 16-yard line as White hits it short. high and short. Short kick. But that was not a good kick, and White a little disappointed with himself as he goes off the field as they'll mark it 
out around the 31 yard line. They may be avoiding Vigorito. He's got a 17 point return average, 17 average, 17 yard average on returns. Right, one of the touchdown, long touchdown. Dr. Bob Ward, the strength coach of the Dallas Cowboys. Even their weightlifting programs are computerized here in Dallas, and each the computer tells each of these players what they should be lifting and how much. Miami's first possession of the second half. 13 minutes left in the third quarter. Woodley going long for Cepelo. And he has a touchdown. 69 yards, and Miami is back within two. We mentioned early that the Miami Dolphins would be picking out their targets in that secondary. They've gone after Everson Walls. They went after Charlie Waters on that play. Waters not able to run on those sore legs of his like he used to. And they gave David Woodley time to throw that football. You see the strong arm that Don Shula talked about. Cephalo takes it over his shoulder on the dead run. And he gets in there all by himself. Beautiful throw by Woodley. His longest touchdown pass in his young career. Von Chamina try the point after. Whoops. Ed Too Tall Jones invades. Now Cephalo Merlin has caught three passes in the game. One for 21. He's on a progression. One for 21, one for 31, and now one for 69. That's 121 yards on three plays. That's a pretty good progression. How many does he have on the next one, Dick? <laughs> Cephalo has been a big catch player for the Dolphins, although used somewhat sparingly. Well, Cephalo basically in this game because Nat Moore is injured. Von Shaman right down the middle with this extra point try after he hit the upright the last time. So on a long 69 yard pass from Woodley to Cephalo the Dolphins are in within one point of the Dallas Cowboys and 13 minutes left in the third quarter. fans watching and you can see where the visiting team where their fans get to sit low end zone. I don't think those are Tex Rams personal <laughs> seats down there. I, that was one of the things that always made me angry. James Jones and he won't return it used to make you angry. Oh it used to make me angry. You, you go into town and they give you seats. Uh, sometimes uh, your friends would be looking at the game through rafters and girders. <laughs> Short scoring drive for these Dolphins. Boy, they came firing back. A nine second drive. Oh, wow. One play, One play in the quarter. <laughs> <laughs> well, Shula, uh, interesting. Both these teams well coached, and they always come out with, with good adjustments after the half. And I think that was an adjustment. They felt that they could get deep. They thought they could get the ball to Cephalo. They did very quickly. Let's see how their defense does now. Danny White with only Dorsett in the backfield, and here comes Tony. Out of bounds. He's learned to duck alertly out of the field of play. As a youngster, he used to try to stay in bounds, often leading to a fumble or an injury. When you can't make any more yardage, why not get out of bounds? You want to carry the ball in a long season that's 16 games and hopefully plus playoff, and that puts him at the 100-yard mark. So if the statistic holds up, the Miami Dolphins are in trouble. There is your stat, the one that is so telling on the opponents of these Dallas Cowboys. Tony Dorsett. He did a lot of work strengthening his body, worked harder in this offseason than he ever has getting ready for a season. It's paid off for him. He's now the number two rusher all time for Dallas. Dorsett. No, it's White. Great fake and Brooks Johnson at the 46 yard line. First down. Excellent fake by White. It appeared he had given it to Dorsett. White able to take every possible second before he flicked that ball 21 yards to Butch Johnson. But watch it here. He's all by himself. Waits until the last possible second. Finds the open man and zips that ball into him. Danny White's a, a gifted athlete. He, well, I tell you, he really he handles himself extremely well. And of course, the advantage of a man like Dorsett, when you fake to him, you draw attention. And White took advantage of it. Almost intercepted. That would have been six points the other way for Gerald Small. 
Well, I tell you, Larry Cirillo, our producer, and our director, Ted Nathanson, they've been on the right man all day. Again, they've got him isolated. Look at the reactions of number 48, Gerald Small. Read the pattern perfectly and then able to accelerate. Had that ball in his fingers. He's all the way in the end zone if he gets a hold of that one. There was nobody that would have caught him. He's the fastest Dolphin, 4-4-5 four, four, speed. for White, and now he can't find a man open. He gets it off incomplete. Ron Springs was close enough as Bob Baumhauer at White in a vice. Three-man rush. Bo Camper, or Baumhauer finally getting in on White. White had a lot of time to throw. Uh, White now 11 for 16 on the day. Woodley 11 for 17. Both quarterbacks having a credible afternoon. But right now, Danny White, the Dallas Cowboys, waiting for the third and ten call from Coach Tom Landry and his staff. For those of you not with us earlier, these two outstanding coaches are only one regular season victory apart. Shula's won 188, Landry 189. Third and ten. Just misfired. Good coverage again by Mike Kozlowski and very nearly with a diving catch Jay Soldy. So it'll be fourth and ten as Miami's going to get the ball back. Interestingly as you just pointed out with that incomplete pass Merlin both quarterbacks identical marks 11 for 17 one touchdown pass for White and both scores for Miami have come on Woodley throws missed extra point the difference 14 13 Dallas in front. the 13 bubbles and Dallas says they have it no official word untangle that mass of humanity Vigorito with a big return average trying to get some yardage up the middle but he really got thumped what? What's going on underneath that pile? Merlin? You better believe that there is a giant fight going on underneath that stack and the officials are trying to get them sorted out. Nobody will turn loose of that football. There it is. Steve Howell wow. won the wrestling match. And you know that sometimes a football will change hands three or four times under a stack like that. <laughs> so the Dolphins dodge a bullet here. Give you a chance to watch it. You see Vigorito right here taking the, the route up the middle. That means he's going right into the throat of the action. Dickerson, the man who stripped the football loose. And again, he's made such outstanding plays. The ball first in the hands there, Ray, and it's a battle. Look at Howell. He's on the top of the pile, and he came up with the ball. Across the way at Shea Stadium, Seattle's Jim Zorn has just thrown a 27-yard touchdown pass to Steve Largent. The point after was no good, but Seattle still out in front of the Jets. 13 zip in the third. Let's go back to Dick Enberg and Merlin Olson in Dallas. Well, Byron, an upset brewing there at Shea, and it was an upset that Steve Howell came up with that fumble recovery. And after this play, we're going to show it to you again. You talk about a man working himself to the bottom of the pile to get the ball. 14-13, Dallas leads, and Miami fortunate to have the ball at the 21. Woodley, and it's complete to the far side. Everson Walls. Well, now let's go back to the fumble by Vigorito. Vigorito is going to fumble, and Howell, number 36, is one of the last men in on the play, and still is able to get the ball. All right, the ball is stripped free here, and it appears that the Cowboys are going to get it. Ray misses there. Now watch where Howell comes in. This is Howell on the upper left of your picture. There he is at the top of the pile. He wound up getting the ball when they unpiled it. That's why Dallas was so upset. He's a burglar. He just went in there and stole it. He's earned a spot in the backfield with Tony Nathan. First down on that pass by Woodley. Nathan. Good defensive play by Harvey Martin, number 79 native of Dallas went to East Texas State they call him the trapper he's led the team in sacks eight consecutive years and he's tied for the lead this year 
Both of these coaches, uh, both of the staffs actually, calling the plays from the sideline for Woodley and for White. Play going in for Coach Don Shula. Shula who went to John Carroll University. Graduated in 1950, a running back. And as you well know, his son is a wide receiver for the Baltimore Colts. Nathan on a quick pop gets out across the 35, but that's far short of a first down. We'll bring up about third and five. Nathan is the kind of back that is very effective on a draw play. He's been most effective this year on the draw plays. But on that particular play, uh, no one fooled on the Dallas side of the line of scrimmage. They closed it off quickly. Let's see what uh, Coach Shula and company have in mind for this third down situation. Shula, who has a pet collie called Zonk, after, of course, his great star of the past, Larry Zonka. Woodley down the middle to Rose, and he makes the catch, or does he? No, incomplete. As Charlie Waters teamed up with Mike Downs to knock it away. And it appeared that Rose, who made a sensational juggling catch at the end of the first half, had another. It would appear that Woodley trying to get down the middle against Charlie Waters here. Waters, bothered by a sore knee, has had three knee operations in the past three years, had his knee drained yesterday. And he's hurting a little bit, but he's there in time to deliver the blow. Rose could not hang on to that football. Popped out at the last second. Tom Oros to punt. He'll deliver from around his 28. And at the 22 at the other end is James Jones. Oros, a two-step kicker, lofts it high. And Jones is hit immediately at the 22-yard line by Don Besselou, number 46, and Joe Rose, number 80. 40-yard punt, no return. Dallas has the ball. Third quarter, nine minutes and 14 seconds remaining, and the Cowboys lead by one. A look at the 20-yard line and the drainage of this artificial carpet at Texas Stadium. And it takes some getting used to, doesn't it? Uh, I remember the Rams uh, early on when they played in Philadelphia against the Eagles. You see penalties per game and only one today. Now, uh, your teammate then, Roman Gabriel, had trouble throwing to the outside. He always threw too tall. White. Complete. Tony Hill out of bounds and a first down at the 33-yard line. 64,221 in attendance, but it's sold out. Over 65,000 seats sold. Texas Stadium, the scene. Dick Enberg, Merlin Olsen, outstanding game between two of the top teams in the National Football League and the Dallas Cowboys by a missed extra point. Lead 14-13. Von Schaumann hit the upright on the extra point try after the first Dolphin score. And it's White and the Cowboys at the 34-yard line. First down. We're in the third quarter, and this is Dorsett. He's already over 100 yards. And he's got some running room. Oh, saving the day was Bob Brzezinski. There was nothing but daylight to the near sidelines. Tom Rafferty, center, talked about the difficulty of getting out after that snap, but does a good job of staying with Bob Baumhauer, number 73. But look at the field that Baumhauer covered. That's one of the reasons that Dorsett had to cover it back. And Brzezinski just diving and saving that just by a fraction of an inch. Dors Look at the speed that Dorsett uses to get all the way back across the field. Brzezinski, if he doesn't get a hold of that ankle, is going to have trouble because Dorsett is gone. Screen play to Springs, and he's got nothing but room. 45, 50, 40, out of bounds at the Miami 40-yard line. Four yard screen play from White to Ron Springs. You see the kind of pressure that Baumhauer putting on Rafferty, but his job here is to let the tackle go and then get to the outside and lead the screen along with Kurt Peterson, number 65. And they're doing their share of the work right there. Well, Good they were play. way downfield before oh, they yeah. even met any uh, defensive resistance. Good call. Reverse to Johnson and then to White. Could be intercepted. Springs makes the catch. Oh, my. Don 
Shula cannot believe it. They did not fool the Miami defense at all. They had it covered deep. And White made a very bad pass. Threw the ball into traffic. Watch him here. He wants to go deep, but the deep man is covered. Gets pressure, throws the ball off his back foot. It hangs up there, is almost intercepted. But Ron Springs comes down with the football. Marvelous play for the Cowboys. First down at the Miami 24, Dorsett. Cut down at the 21-yard line by A.J. Dewey. From LSU, the number one pick of the Dolphins four years ago. Another look at that flea flicker. And Johnson taking the ball, flipping it back. Now White looking deep, knows he can't get there. Under pressure here. And that's, you don't get away with that all the time. Number 55, Roan right on top, and Dewey waiting there. They figured one of them was going to get their hands on that football. Terrific catch by Ron Springs. It's now second and seven. Cowboys lead by one point, 14-13. 6.45, remaining third quarter. Springs. And a flag goes down as Springs is to the 15-yard line. Only the second penalty flag we've seen today. Now this will be a holding penalty against the Cowboys. They'll march it back, and that hurts them a bit. They really had it going here in this uh, third quarter. It's against Dallas. Referee Fred Wyatt marks off 10 yards. Holding number 64, second down. Tom Rafferty. The center, guilty of the hold. In case you joined us late, Cowboys scored in the first quarter. Springs five yards. In the second period, Miami on a Woodley to Nathan five-yard pass made it seven to six. Von Chaman missed the extra point. Danny White to Butch Johnson, a 21-yard pass, 14-6 at the half. Dallas, first play of the third fumble. quarter by Miami. A fumble, and White recovers his own fumble. Woodley hit Cephalo, a 69-yard bomb to make it 14-13. That's where we stand. The one disadvantage you have when you start changing centers in there is that that relationship, that center has got to handle a ball every time that ball is snapped, and that's not an easy relationship to establish. Rafferty, obviously a good center, but he's now had four bad snaps in five weeks. Rafferty, of course, an outstanding guard, but he has done the snapping for the Cowboys in kick situations. This is the toughest snap, the blind snap on the spread. White out of the shotgun. What a play. McNeil faked by Pearson, who gave him a move inside, but Pearson and White were on the same page, White knowing he would go outside, and it almost worked. 14 out of 21. A chance to look into the eyes from the defensive secondary. Danny White looking first to his left, then coming back, picking a second receiver, finally sees the opening there. Looked to me like this ball should have been caught. Pearson delayed just a second. Looked like he pulled himself back out of that pattern. Maybe had trouble picking up the football. As we said, he was in the hospital early with an injured eye. A white and punt formation on fourth down. Trying to angle it out of bounds. He hits it well. And it's going to be a pretty good kick. Marked at the six, seven. Still going. Eight yard line. So Miami takes over as the drive by the Cowboys stalls. And with 5.54 remaining in the third quarter remains Cowboys 14, Dolphins 13. Now let's go to Byron Day, NFL 81. Okay, Dick, thank you very much. Out in Oakland, Bill Kenny trying to rally his chief teammates. Tries for the deep six here, but the ball is picked off in the end zone by Otis McKinney, his second INT of the year. And the Raiders still out in front in the third, 17-0. Dick? Thank you, Byron. Of course, Bill Kenny was a Miami Dolphin. They let him get away. And they're not going to do that this year with their third string quarterback, Jim Jensen. Tony Nathan. Out across the 10 yard line. Gain of about four before Brunig and Thurman can make the hit. Cowboy defense has done a good job of containing Nathan. One of the reasons, the play of number 53, Bob Brunick. The Dallas Cowboys defenses, very quick and flowing. And you see how many Cowboys there are at the point of attack? About five of them there. And they stack up on, on Nathan. That's good defense. And they're tough. They're tough to play again. Second down for Woodley. 
Lee moves left. Split the backs. Franklin and Nathan. Knockdown. Harvey Martin. You wonder at the pressure exerted on a quarterback. You're going to feel like Harvey Martin is coming right into your front room. Look at him driving to the inside, breaks away from Geisler, and just swats that football down like a volleyball player spiking it. Terrific coverage. It is now third down and six. Martin does some broadcasting work of his own. In fact, we'll give you an idea of how many of these Cowboys are employed radio and television you think they don't love their football here in Dallas Ariel Harris and Vigorito to the left Cephalo right the three-yard line. Again, from behind, tremendous pressure up the middle from White, and Martin is right behind him on the outside. That's not a sack. That's a jailbreak. That's a lookout. So Martin gets one on a fly slot, and then Randy White with a sack. Now Oro's kicking from the back line of his end zone. Too much time against Miami. And that's going to make it all the tougher for Oros. The one advantage that Oros has, he is a two, not a three-step kicker. That's especially important because this will march half the way into that end line. And instead of being able to kick from a normal 15-yard distance, he'll be kicking more from about 12 yards. Possible down here that Dallas may go after the kick, try and block it. Don Shula's team hit with its first penalty of the game. 4.35 left third quarter. James Jones is at the Miami 43, so the Dolphins are going to get good position. You see Jones in the background, and a short kick. Jones hit immediately by Elmer Bailey, but he breaks away. Only to be knocked down by 54, Steve Potter. A 38-yard punt for Oros under pressure. So Dallas comes up with excellent field position just outside the Miami 35-yard line. And with 4.25 remaining in the third quarter, the Cowboys 14 and the Dolphins 13. Harvey Martin, boy, in that timeout, he was trying to continue the fire in that defensive line. And meanwhile, Von Schaumann, who had made 70 consecutive extra points, it's his miss on the first Miami touchdown that's the difference, 14-13 Dallas. From the 36, Dorsett. And Larry Gordon, there to greet him. One of the few times Dorsett has not gained today. Larry Gordon, a big play linebacker, has been pretty well contained over there on the left side, but made a fine play there. One of the, I, I often feel sorry for kickers, Dick, because they are so visible and because their mistakes are so well documented. A player like Harvey Martin is going to have maybe 50 to 60 plays in which to vindicate himself if he makes a mistake. And very possibly, if he does make a mistake, we won't see it from up here. No one misses a mistake by a kicker. That's a good point. They are lonely people. Dorsett up the middle. Boy, he had a sprinter's start, and he's to the 32-yard line. Kim Bocamper, 58, and A.J. Dewey, 77, on the tackle. We talk about Dewey's learning at this linebacking position. He'll get a chance to right here. His legs cut out from underneath him by Kurt Peterson. A little leg whip there. Still manages to get back to the inside. Good instincts for the football. A good football player. He's one of those people, actually, Shula moved too. He moved Bo Camper from linebacker to defensive line and, and A.J. Dewey from defensive line to linebacker. Third down, a long four. <laughs> McNeil covering Hill and White throwing under pressure. Bob Baumhauer right down White's throat. The quarterbacks become very human when they don't have time to throw the football. 
Here comes Raphael Septien, and Septien, who has been nothing short of sensational. He's 17 for 18, and that's on an all-time NFL record course, the most field goals ever kicked in a year, 34. His longest, 47. This would be 49. So he's really testing his string with this one. Nine in a row by Septien. That is a Dallas record. It's good. No, no, no good. No, no good. now they say no good. It was wide to the left, apparently. No Plenty signal long. given by either yeah. official. Plenty long, but wide to the left. And Septien's string of nine consecutive ends with a long 49-yard try. He had plenty of leg, Dick, but as is the case with many soccer-style kickers, they tend to hook that ball a little bit. And right at the end, it hooked out. Did not miss by much. And so the Dolphins remain within a point of the Cowboys, and they have the ball. Here at Texas Stadium, a lot of folks with their ears and eyes toward the west in Los Angeles, game five, and the Yankees leading the Dodgers 1-0. That series tied it to a piece. So they will go back to New York at least for game six on Tuesday night. We got a barn burner here. Miami able to dodge a bullet, still only down by one point, and a chance to take the football upfield. A little bit less than three minutes remaining in the third quarter. They take over at their 31. Andra Franklin, he's been used seldomly here in the second half. They weren't looking for Franklin, so he breaks loose for nine yards. Dutton and Downs, the tacklers. Check other scores in the NFL. Upset brewing in New York, where Seahawks lead the Jets 13-3 in the fourth quarter. The Bears, another possible upset, 10-3 in Chicago over the Chargers. Halftime, Oakland leading Kansas City 17-0, and the 49ers lead the Rams by a touchdown at Candlestick. Franklin, another big hole, and he rumbles out to the 47-yard line before Brunig and Brown could make the tackle. First down, Miami. Finals today, Buffalo putting pressure on Miami with a 9-7 win against Denver. Washington 24-22 over New England. That's a mild upset. Cleveland outscoring Baltimore 42-28. Philadelphia breaking a 10-10 tie in the fourth quarter and wins 20-10. The Giants upset Atlanta 27-24. St. Louis over Minnesota, another upset, 30-17. Woodley on first down. Going long for Harris, and he caught it at the 23-yard line. How did that ball get through the Dallas defense? And Harris, you talk about concentration all day, Merlin. There was another case in point. Also a chance to watch a rookie corner, a rookie safety back, Mike Downs. Now Downs has time to come up and knock that ball away. Didn't quite know how to play it. Harris kept his concentration, kept his eye on the football. The ball absolutely perfectly thrown over the top of the first defender, Nate Thurman, and into the arms of the receiver. 29-yard play and a nice touch by Woodley. He just laid the ball out there. From the 24, Franklin. No hole that time. May have gained a yard. Randy White, John Dutton, the entire center of that line to make the tackle. Other scores, Detroit defeated Green Bay 31-27. And another, the biggest upset of all today, the New Orleans Saints defeat the Cincinnati Bengals. Bengals in first place and knocked off by the Saints 17-7 and they're celebrating on Bourbon Street tonight. Von Shaman loosening up. Second and nine at the 23. This could be the last play of the third quarter. Bootleg. And he's, he's all alone. Oh. Rather than going out of bounds, Woodley took on the tackler and a first down at the 12-yard line, but with a man with a broken rib, you don't like to see that. He's okay. Well, he'll get a little lecture on that from Don Shula. A very well-executed bootleg here. Good ball handling by Woodley. He's got himself out there all alone. No contain. They lost it completely, but he's got to go out of bounds here. That's silly. That's Harris, the wide receiver on that play. side was taking the defense deep and allowed Woodley the running room. The end of the third quarter, we return to our local studios for this message. 
This is Byron Day in New York. Out at Shea Stadium, the Seahawks are pouring it on the Jets. Sherman Smith blasts four yards for six. The point after was no good. Seattle now ahead 19 to three in the fourth quarter. Let's go back to Dick Enberg in Dallas. Thank you, Byron. So the Jets, who have been playing so well the last month, and in fact had tied Miami in Miami, were 3-3-1 three, three and one going into the game, and the Seahawks trying to win their second of the season. Meanwhile, Miami here, the underdog against Dallas. Cowboys 13 straight at home, victories. Dallas leads by one, and Miami deep with a first down outside the Dallas 10. Woodley, wide open, Harris, and it was almost intercepted. Mike Downs coming over almost with a ricochet. As Harris was open, Woodley missed on the pass. Woodley had it in there. Duriel had a chance to get it. Uh, the pass thrown very rifled in there, thrown very hard by Woodley, who had plenty of time to throw that football. But watch the way it's lost right there. I, Duriel just had a chance and blew it, and Downs had a chance to pick it up on the ricochet and missed it too. Little chance to watch the blocking by Tony Nathan coming out to pick up number 72, Vic Tutal Jones. Second and 10 at the Cowboy 11. Franklin, they tried to cross up the defense, but Franklin makes only about three. You got to believe, Dick, you got to believe that Von Shaman is over there on the sideline saying, just give me a chance to get my foot into this one. I, I want to make up for that extra point I missed. Well, it appears he's going to get a chance one way or the other unless Dallas forces a turnover on this third down play. Cephalo to the left. Joe Rose is slotted left. Harris to the right. They pick up the blitz. That's going to be intercepted. things that Woodley has done very little of is to throw that kind of pass. Very, very few interceptions. But that man, number 32, Dennis Thurman, watch the kind of position he gets on Cephalo. That ball should not have been thrown. Now Cephalo becomes the defender, trying desperately to get around and knock that football away. Thurman would have none of it. He had the interception. That was his fifth of the year. Earlier, his teammate Walls has his seventh NFL's best. Oh, the Cowboys stop the Dolphins, and now it's Dorsett to the 22. Miami is claiming that was a fumble, but it, it appeared Dorsett was clearly down on the play. Dolphins have had a lot of big plays in this game. Passes of 31, 29, 21, 31, and 69 yards. That's a they've kept that up from last week. Last week they had passes of 54, 50, 46, and 39. Woodley has had a two great games, but he made a critical error. They've got to get themselves another chance to get into that goal or to get a field goal up. 13 and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter. Flag down. Baumhauer and Better is in on. The thrower white. See if the Cowboys took too much time. Might have been a false start too from the call of the official, one or the other. So five yards will bring it back to the 17. False start, 67. Veteran Pat Donovan, an all pro with an early move. He doesn't make many mistakes. He and Cooper, two tackles, playing very well on that Cowboy offensive line. Second down, 13. Screen to Dorsett. And what a play by Bob Brzezinski. He was blocked out of the play, bounced to his feet, and still made the tackle. Only a three or four yard gain. Brzezinski with an outstanding play. So it's third down Dallas, but right now let's go to New York and Byron Day. 
Okay, Dick, in Chicago, Dan Fouts has just connected with Charlie Joyner for his 18th touchdown of the year. That's a motion in the NFL, and the San Diego Chargers have finally drawn even with Chicago Bears. It's 10-all now in the fourth quarter. Let's go back to Dallas, Dick Enberg, Merlin Olsen. All right, Byron, Dan Fouts and the Air Coriel working at Soldier Field have tied it up. Here it's 14-13, Dallas leads. Third and 10 from the 20-yard line. Lots of time. 58, Kim Bocamper trips up Danny White with Dewey there to secure the tackle along with Baumauer. Second sack for Miami, so now it's the Cowboys who will have to kick from deep in their own end. Defense for Miami coming through with a very important play, shutting down the offense for Dallas. Danny White stays in the game to kick, but he's kicking out of his own end zone, virtually assuring good field position for that Miami offense. Vigorito stands on the 50-yard line as White delivers. At the 46, Vigorito crushed at the 43. Now Miami gets it back in Dallas territory after coughing up the ball on an end zone interception on their last position. Timeout, 11.54 remaining in the game. Dallas by one. I'd believe this man, <laughs> Father, <laughs> Father Murphy, Merlin Olson. It'll be a week from Tuesday. Father Murphy debuts on NBC, 8 o'clock, every Tuesday night. Every Tuesday night, 8 o'clock. That's 7 Central. Seven <laughs> 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 Father Murphy, indeed. Yeah. Well, all the reviews have been outstanding. If your family enjoys watching television together, and you can't always say that, then make Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock a regular habit with Merlin Olson starring in his new series, A Week from Tuesday. Here with 11.54 left, Miami trails by one to the Dallas Cowboys. Woodley, a flanker screen to Cephalo. Beautiful running by Cephalo. Look at this. He might go all the way. All the way to the 10-yard line, Jimmy Cephalo. That's the kind of play that you, you quickly turn around and look for those yellow flags. Changing field, changing direction all the way across the field, 32 yards by Cephalo. Watch the moves that he puts on the Dallas Cowboys and watch the teamwork of those Miami Dolphins as they get in front to block for him. What an incredible play by Cephalo. He's had a day of big plays. Downs saved a touchdown. Here it is again. Cephalo, 5'11", 188. With 9-7 speed and a bushel basket full of moves. First down, Cephalo has 164 yards today, pass receiving. big play like that you can sure tell whose stadium you're in this place just went almost dead quiet there is a lot of celebration however on that Miami bench and some resolute quiet on the other bench Nathan ducks inside of the good block there and then just turns it on breaks away from Danny White gets away from downs and springs into the end zone second touchdown for Nathan today here's Von Shaman's try for point Drills it through. The Cowboys in the last 12 games, 11 times the opposition in the second half has scored seven points or less. And today the Dolphins have a couple of touchdowns in the second half. This one by Tony Nathan after they open the second half with a 69 yard bomb, Woodley to Cephalo. The Miami Dolphins are in the lead. Kenny and the Chiefs, he throws up his second interception of the day. This one picked off by Lester Hayes in the end zone. It's still 17 zip Raiders in the third quarter. And the Oakland Raiders then would move into a 4 4 record here at the halfway mark. Miami has taken the lead. 20 to 14. Von Shaman's kick is too deep. And Dallas will try it from the 20 yard line as Ron Fellows takes the touchback. The Cowboys 
Here's the ranking and pass defense in the NFL. Denver the best, then New England. Miami not that good, but Dallas 24th in the league. And that uh, part because of the youth, two rookies starting in the defensive backfield. They have made up for that in a way by intercepting more passes than any team in the NFL. And they have made the big plays to stop drives, even though they've given up tremendous chunks of yardage. So two drives in the second half by Miami one nine seconds and the other 20 seconds that's lightning quick white for Hill and a first down at the 41 yard line Don McNeil made the tackle we talked to you about big plays on the Miami side Dallas has had their own big plays they've had a 35 yard pass two 21 yard passes a 23 yarder a 24 yarder and a 20 yarder and right here a pretty good pass to pick up another first down to Tony Hill that one good for 21 two 13s figure in this game. 13 wins in a row at home for Dallas and Miami has beaten NFC teams 13 times. No good. He was out of bounds. The official right on the spot said he did not get both feet in. Chance for you to look at it. He needs to have two feet in. Touch the line with a second foot. Excellent call. You see that official with his head down? Had those eyes right on those feet. Fine call by the official. We were commenting, Merlin, that this has really been an excellent game to watch. Two good teams playing well, and the officials have contributed as well. Outstanding their work today. And watch the position he had. That's just like a good umpire in baseball. He was right on the spot. From the 41, second down. White protected well. Hill. First down at the Miami 36. Lyle Blackwood made the tackle. Miami defense playing so well early in this second half. Now giving Danny White a little time to throw the football. And you can't do that. Not when he has receivers like Thrill Hill. He'll get it to him, and Hill will hang on to it. Boy, it's absorbed quite a lick from Lyle Blackwood. He's done that a couple of times today. Hill's third catch for 56 total yards, and the Cowboys are on the march. Miami leads 20 to 14, fourth quarter. Dorsett and Brzezinski there to make the tackle for Miami. Ball popped loose momentarily. Good read on the draw play against by Big Doug Betters. Ten minutes left in the fourth quarter here. Miami leads by six. Let's go to Byron Day in New York. Dick out in Oakland. The Chiefs are finally on the board. Billy Jackson bust one for 29 yards, and he's put seven points up on the board. For the Chiefs, they still trail by 10 in the third quarter, 17 to 7. Dick. All right, Byron. Denver leading that AFC West has lost. Kansas City losing, and San Diego is tied with Chicago. Danny White. Intercepted by Ernest Rome. And Roan is to the 23 yard line as Roan making a fine catch over the middle. Roan, the best of the Cowboy line, or the Miami linebackers at getting back into those defensive zones, reads it well. A chance for you to look at Roan getting his drop. He's going to be right in the middle of your picture, reads the play well, slides up in the front there, and just snares that football out of the arms of the intended receiver. Rohn's second interception of the year stops Dallas. Miami retains its 20 to 14 edge. Back at Texas Stadium, night falling here in Irving. 9:41 remaining in the fourth quarter. Miami with the ball and the lead, 20 to 14 over the Cowboys. Andra Franklin, the rookie from Nebraska, up the middle. Earlier we talked about the fact that the Cowboys and their fans love football. We're going to give you that in a moment. But right now we understand we have an update. NFL 81 in New York. 
Back in Chicago, the Bears have broken out on top. Walter Payton carrying it in from three yards out. They now lead the Chargers 17 to 10. Three minutes left to go in that ball game. Let's go back to Dick Enberg and Merlin Olson, Texas Stadium. Well, that Western Division, Denver, Kansas City, and San Diego all tied five and two, and all three teams are losing today. Second and six for Woodley. Complete. Joe Rose has a first down at the Miami 40-yard line, 13-yard throw. We're talking about the Dallas Cowboys and the various shows. Tomorrow, here in Dallas, you can have your choice of several. 6.15 a.m., the Tom Rafferty talks Cowboys. Then at uh, 7.25 on another station, the D.D. Lewis Report. Then at 7.25 a.m., the Butch Johnson Show. 8.15 is the Harvey Martin Report. 8.20 is the Dallas Cowboy Report with Tony Dorsett. At 5.15 in the evening, Bob Brunig Report. 6 o'clock, the Tom Landry Show. The Tex Schramm Show is at 6.15. That's only halfway down the list. To be continued. <laughs> Tony Nathan oh, Tony. out to the 45-yard line. Nathan is Even the publicity uh, director, Doug Todd, has his own radio show. So you just pick your favorite cowboy and you listen to his comments tomorrow. And right now it's going to be a rather glum report because Miami leads by six and they're moving the ball effectively again. And one interesting thing about this particular series, you would think that maybe Shula and his offensive staff would sit on that six-point lead. Here they come. 31 and 5, a remarkable record. Miami against NFC teams. Of course, Dallas, an NFC team. And Miami has won 13 in a row against the NFC. Duriel Harris. And it appears he's close to a first down at midfield. It certainly worked on. Everson Walls, number 24, he's had his hands full out there. They've been very smart in the way they've gone after him. They've gone after him short and long, giving him first the deep passes and then coming up to take advantage of the little screen passes and the little outs in front of him. That was the same play that they used to Cephalo for the long gainer to set up the last touchdown. Woodley, for the second time in his career, is over 300 yards passing. He's had a big day, especially the second half. Woodley going deep for Harris. Out of bounds at the five-yard line. And with that throw, Woodley has his best ever day in the NFL. That pass was worth 45 yards and would have been a touchdown except it carried Harris out of bounds with momentum. You get a feeling again for the strength and the passing ability and accuracy of young David Woodley. And again, they're working on Everson Walls. They just hit him short. And for his benefit, a little stumble there, but that ball perfectly thrown and Harris just taking a maximum extension, unable to get his feet back underneath him. But look at the power, an effortless throw, and of course, 45 yards on the pass play. That's two, four, six, seven big pass plays on the day for Woodley. Merlin, unofficially, the all-time Miami record is 345 by Greasy. We have Woodley with 346. First and goal at the five. Not much there as Andra Franklin tries the right side and Bob Brunig makes the tackle. Obviously, they would like to have seven points here, but I think they might settle for three. Force Dallas to score at least a touchdown and a field goal to go ahead. 622, 621. The clock now becoming a friend for the Miami Dolphins if they can get some points on the board here. Otherwise, they're just one play away from uh, a Dallas lead. As we started today, 13 is a lucky number for both. 13 straight against the NFC for Miami. 13 wins in a row at home for Dallas. Little influence play, but Franklin, no hole. Brunig wouldn't buy it. Nor would Anthony Dickerson. So it's third and goal for Don Shula. Will he go to the pass or this close in? Do you think he'll risk it? I think they'll throw it. I think they'll throw it. He, he's not afraid to. He's not afraid to put that ball in the air. Even though Woodley made a mistake earlier, Shula is not. Woodley came into this game having thrown only two interceptions on the year. He's thrown two in this game, and of course the one, a very costly one, looked like they might not get another chance, but they've done it. Got one scored, and they're right back again. Down to two seconds. One second. He got it off. Touchdown 
to Joe Rose. A perfect throw by Woodley. And Miami moves 12 points in front. Dolphins have never lost here in Dallas, and they're in an opportunity here to keep that record alive as Woodley makes a fine play. Looked like he had an option to run on that play if he wanted to. Just simply rolls out, sees the opening to Rose, and watch Rose dive in there inside of that end line marker for the seven points. Six points. That go for the seven. Von Schaumann's try for point is good. David Woodley on a record setting pace the best game ever by a Miami quarterback that's saying something as he's led the Dolphins to a 13 point lead checking the Miami record book the most yardage ever in a single game passing Bob Greasy 349 against Houston in 1978 David Woodley with that touchdown has 350 a new Miami record Von Shaman's kick short fellows at the four out to the 20 yard line. Submarining was Steve Potter for the tackle. Woodley 18 for 27 at 67%, 350 yards, three touchdown passes, and a record setting day against the Dallas Cowboys. And look at the numbers for Woodley. All of those are big plays on the day from that young man. And one of the one of the reasons he's been so successful, he's had Bob Greasy working with him as a coach to help him develop his skills as a quarterback. So the Cowboys with five minutes left have to play catch up. Tony Dorsett in the open field, breaking tackles and gains about 10 yards. So Dorsett, well over 100 yards, but if that record of you win when Dorsett gains 100 is going to hold, the Cowboys have some hurrying up to do. Joe Rose from the University of California. Here's a man who didn't start in college until he was a senior. Made it as a long shot as a pro and has come up with some big catches today. Was drafted in the seventh round by Miami a year ago. Miami making full use of all the players on their roster. Cephalo and and Rose listed way down the line. They're not started. They sure have come into their four today. Second and one play. Ron Springs breaks a tackle and another. And then gets out of bounds. And that's just as important. Or does he? The clock is now stopped at 413 remaining. So the you time saw, is a big factor. You saw Bill Einsparger, the defensive coach. He's demonstrating how he wants him to tackle out there. And I don't blame him. They, they've had a few lapses defensively, and this, I think, is, is the smartest defensive coach, the smartest defensive mind in the NFL, and you'll see why he is angry at his defense. Watch the missed tackles here. You get one right there from Blackwood. You get a second one right there from Gordon, and they finally missed one from Dewey. He went out of bounds, and Arns Parker whipped off his earphones and said, this is the way you do it. Two arms around. <laughs> the Cowboys trailing by 13. Four minutes and 12 seconds left, and White runs out of room in time, but gets out of bounds, and that stops the clock at 4.04. And even though there's that much time remaining, White, and I'm sure all the Cowboys' skill position players, the receivers and backs, know that whenever possible, get out of bounds because they have to score and get the ball and score again. One thing very important, you're dealing with a veteran team in this Dallas Cowboy organization. They know how to work the clock, and they're not... They're not panicked. They're going to work the ball down and get their score if they can. And then if they get an opportunity, they'll come back, try the extra, try the onside kick and see if they can get another one. White now 19 for 29, 281 yards. He's had a good day. Uh-oh, face mask. And down goes White at the 41, but Bo Camper got a piece of the mask on the initial hit. And you saw Bo Camper smack himself on the head. Uh, he knew what he did. Uh, not intentional. Bo Camper reaching for anything he could get a hold of. Went right by Danny White. Tried to get a hold of his shoulder pad. Instead, got a hold of the face mask. And let's see if it's a 15-yarder or 5-yarder. Hey, this will be two. You have the face mask on and the two yards. Oh, they're going to mark the big one. Yeah. So that stops the clock and gains 15 yards down to the 43 of Miami. 
Personal foul, roughing the pass at number 58. Watch Bo Camper now go by, and you just see White's head snap around. Now, that's why they gave him the 15-yard penalty. The jerking of that mask around that way is considered to be very dangerous. In fact, you can get hurt very quickly on that. And anytime that happens, they'll give you that 15-yarder. And Bo Camper, does he know it? Right there. Sure he does. First down Dallas at the Miami 43 with three minutes 58 seconds left and Miami in the lead. White going long to Hill. Out of bounds at the five yard line. A great throw and a perfect catch as Hill stayed in bounds. Tony Hill doing some big play work on his own. A 38 yard play. Hill working on McNeil down the sideline. McNeil keeping good position with him. But the ball just absolutely thrown where it, it had to be thrown right in over the shoulder of McNeil. Danny White doing a good job using the time he had, putting that ball in perfect spiral right on the mark. Out of bounds, but close to that touchdown. Let's see if they can get it in there. First and goal just inside the five with 352 left. White to Cosby, touchdown! Doug Cosby from Santa Clara, wide open. How quickly that comfort level evaporates for these Miami Dolphins as the 13-point lead suddenly becomes a six-point lead. Fine play to Doug Cosby. Big tight end. Sucks it up. Chance now to pick up the extra point. Cosby's first touchdown this year. Septi ends try for point. Good. 348 left. And Dallas not only scored, but used very little time in so doing. They didn't need a timeout. They used just about a minute is all to get that touchdown. A little play action to kind of freeze people. Nice play. And, and now the question, with that much time on the clock, does Landry need to go to the onside kick? He may decide to kick it deep and count on his defense to shut down the Miami Dolphins. We'll get that answer in a moment. It's 27-21 Miami here. Let's go to NFL 81 and Byron Day. Okay, take a tight ball game there in Texas Stadium, a tight ball game now in San Diego, or in Chicago, rather. Dan Fouts has just thrown this touchdown pass to tie it all up at 17 all. West Chandler receiving the ball. It's tied in the fourth, less than a minute to go. Great games throughout the National Football League. A day of upsets again. And now Dallas, will they kick deep or short? Miami set for an onside kick. They've got their onside kick return team up there, and it goes deep. Fulton Walker to the 20, and that's all. Cosby, the touchdown maker, this crowd is going to support that Dallas defense as Miami now with 339 left. touchdown drive five plays 79 yards it took them only a minute 28 seconds to score and they didn't use a timeout Woodley to Cephalo that's going to be a no penalty as the ball was out of bounds no call because the receiver was out of bounds. Otherwise, that would have been a call. He started to go for the flag, and the other official came over and confirmed. Bill Arnsparger may not agree, but I think it was a good call by the official. Woodley using his mobility to get some extra time on this play. But as you said, Dick, the ball is delivered out of bounds. But no chance here for a, a catch. No chance then for the penalty. The 
this crowd on its feet. with 17 interceptions leading the NFL have three more today two by Thurman and you've got to believe that Woodley is shaking his head he came in here with two interceptions on the season he's had three interceptions today hung that football up and Dennis Thurman just stepped in and took it away from Tony Nathan and then picked up another eight or nine yards we welcome those of you who have seen Seattle upset the New York Jets 19 to 3. Dallas Cowboys trying to rally from behind. It's Hill. Touchdown. For Springs. Ron Springs. Look at the Cowboy bench. point from the first touchdown which seems so insignificant when the Dolphins had the 13 point lead is now back to Hawk Chula. It's tied at 27. And now Von Schaumann hopes that he gets another big chance. Can Miami move into field goal range? Still a lot of time. Three minutes, 17 seconds. Fulton Walker will take the touchback. Dick, I don't think I've ever seen a football game with more big pass plays in it. The combination of Woodley and, and White today is... Unbelievable. Reminder, here's Boomer, seen immediately following the conclusion of NBC football coverage over most of these stations, except for most Mountain and Pacific time zone stations, where it'll be seen at its regular time. But here at Texas Stadium, a sellout crowd has seen a beauty. Miami, with three touchdowns in the second half, rallied from down 14 to 6 at halftime, ahead 27-14. And then with four minutes left, Dallas has scored twice in less than two minutes. And Dallas leads 28-27. Four-yard line. Mike Hegman made the hit for Dallas. Less than three minutes left. The only disadvantage to scoring so quickly is you leave some time on that clock. And now Woodley and the Miami Dolphins have a chance to work their way down the field. You can imagine, along with the thoughts of Von Schaman, who missed the extra point. Fans in Buffalo, they're cheering for Dallas. They would pull within a half game of Miami. Meanwhile, in Philadelphia, they're rooting for Miami as Dallas only a game behind the Eagles. 
complete to Nathan who has a first down at the 31 Hagman and Brown the tacklers for Dallas Nathan with a couple of touchdowns today you can see the flak jacket under the jersey of Nathan Woodley also wearing that jacket both with cracked ribs I got to believe that Nathan is glad he got on the ground just as he went to the ground White and Jones went sailing over his head. If he'd have taken the shot from the two of them, would have wiped him out. So we're at the two-minute timeout. Two minutes left here at Texas Stadium. It's been a thriller, and the Cowboy fans are rejoicing in the tremendous comeback by Dallas. They lead 28-27, but Miami has the ball. And a second quarter after Miami had scored to make it 7-6. Von Shaman's try for point hits the right upright and bounces back no good and that's the difference in the game 28 27 the executive producer of NBC Sports is Don Olmeyer coordinating producer of NFL football Ted Nathanson today's telecast was produced by Larry Cirillo directed by Ted Nathanson our technical director Ray Fagelski associate director Jim Marcioni and our thanks also Joe Costanza our statistician our spotters Doug Adams John Nelson helping here in the booth Jerry Cohen and Mike Finkel First down at the 31. Two minutes left. Screen incomplete to Vigorito. John Dutton as Vigorito trying to make the juggling catch made the hit. Excellent read by Big John Dutton. Tremendous pressure on Woodley. Had to throw that pass a little earlier than he wanted to. And John Dutton read it quickly, got outside. Otherwise, uh, Vicarito might have been able to pull that down, and he had a little running room. Both teams have had difficulty all season long. Pass defense. We've had a lot of yardage passing by both sides today. Dallas's interceptions, one of the keys. Woodley going long and open is Harris. And he has it inbounds at the 28-yard line. An unbelievable fourth quarter. Woodley comes right back. A 41-yard strike. Look the defenders off all the way and comes back down the sideline. And what a catch by Duriel Harris. Number 82 has had big plays one right after another during this day, but give some credit to the quarterback who looked the defense off to make that play possible. The wide receivers for the Dolphins, Cephalo has 164 yards. Harris has 161 yards receiving. And now Miami in field goal position, 147 left. Audibleizing is Woodley. And the toss to Nathan who gets to the 26-yard line. If Miami cannot move the ball from this spot, it would be a 43-yard field goal attempt. And Von Schaman with a chance to make amends for that missed extra point. If Miami hangs onto the football, remember they had the ball at the 11-yard line, third down earlier in this quarter, and Woodley threw the interception, Thurman in the end zone. Von Schaman has had problems in that 40 to 49 yard range, but you've got to believe he'd like to have a chance to atone for that extra point. Clock ticking away, 108 left. Woodley to Harris, intercepted! Everson Walls! And the rookie, Walls, has his ninth interception of the year. Make that his eighth. His eighth, the flag is down against Miami, I believe, for piling on. Walls has two more today, and Miami is denied. And what a disappointment for young David Woodley, for Don Shuler, his coach, to have been so good and yet so bad, to make so many yards, to make so many big plays, and yet to give up four interceptions in a single day, two to that man, Everson Walls. Looking for Harris again, number 82, Duriel Harris. Watch the ball go over his head right there. No chance for Duriel, the man coming up with the football. 
Everson Walls. Here is a remarkable story, ladies and gentlemen. Everson Walls went to Grambling and last year intercepted 11 passes to lead the NCAA, and no one drafted him. He's a Dallas boy. He grew up two miles from the Dallas Workout Training Center. He goes home for lunch after practice, and here he is leading the NFL, a remarkable eight interceptions in eight games. And now it's Dallas trying to run out the clock. Springs meets a crowd. Dallas will spend, a, or Miami will spend a timeout with 50 seconds left. So the Dolphins intercepted once in the Dallas end zone and intercepted on that play at the five-yard line by Walls. And I've got to believe if the Dallas Cowboys had lost this game, that one of the goats of this game would be Everson Walls. He has been beaten a number of times, short and long, by the Miami Dolphins. But his interception right there at the end of this ball game, if they can hang on now and win, might turn everything around for him. And Merlin, this is not the only NFL drama running its course in this late afternoon, early evening. We understand they're in overtime at Soldier Field. The Bears and the Chargers, and when this game is over, stay with us on NBC. We will show you the exciting climax of that contest as the Bears trying to pull a big upset. Well, except for the missed extra point, we'd be preparing for overtime right now. A fourth quarter that has had plenty of aerial fireworks. Both teams moving almost at will through the air. But Everson Walls, he has two interceptions. Dennis Thurman has two to stop Miami drives. Dolphins have all their timeouts left. The Dolphins have used one timeout, Dick, so they, they do have two. Miami has, or Dallas has all the timeouts. Dorsett out to the 28-yard line. Not quite a first down. So incredibly, with four minutes left, when Miami took the lead 27 to 14, it appeared that that record, Dorsett over 100 yards and the Cowboys win, might falter today. But look what's happened as Randy White, not Dorsett, but White's passing, gets the Cowboys two quick scores. They lead 28-27, and it's an extra point try that Von Schaumann will long remember. Still 44 seconds on the clock. The Miami defense now has to shut down the offense here, and I've got to believe they'll go after the punt, try and block it. Von Schaumann and David Woodley, two men that will undoubtedly commiserate after this one today. A first down by the Dallas Cowboys would virtually assure them the victory here. This is a very crucial play for both teams. The two masters, Tom Landry, regular season, 189 wins. Don Shula on the other sidelines, 188 regular season wins. Third place for Landry all-time behind Hallis and Lambeau, and Shula just a game behind Landry. And Shula was looking to tie him today. Dorsett, does he have the first down? No. And Miami spends its last time out with 40 seconds left. So the Dolphins apparently will get the ball back one more time. There they are, two of the best ever. And you know that just as the teams have enjoyed the challenge of playing against quality, so have these two coaches uh, savored the chance to work against one another. One of their secrets to success, Dick, is the preparation they make for this kind of situation in the game. Both have rehearsed their players on how to kick that ball away in the final minutes of a game, how to carefully protect your punter, and you've got to believe that the Miami Dolphins spend a lot of time working on blocking a punt as well. Vigorito is the only man back. He's at the 28. Danny White to punt. Here they come. And he gets it away. A short kick. But it takes a Dallas bounce to the 24-yard line. 31 seconds left. And Miami cannot stop the clock with a timeout. 45-yard punt for White. Didn't look that good when it left his foot. It looked awfully good when it cleared the line of scrimmage because that means he got it away. And that was the first and foremost thing that he was trying to do. Yeah, we started today with 13, the theme being a lucky number for these teams. Miami had beaten NFC teams 13 in a row, and Dallas at home had won 13 in a row. One would stay on 13. 
And at the moment, it's here's at Dallas with the upper hand. But the way the teams have moved the long ball and by pass, you can't. You, normally, you might say, "Well, it looks as if Miami is in a miracle situation." But not the way Woodley has moved. Although the Dallas defense, they've got one man 30 yards downfield. Woodley over the middle to Rose. He has to get out of bounds, and just does at the 36-yard line. I'm going to say you're almost restricted to patterns on the sideline unless you want to take that opportunity to go down the middle and hope you can get up and shut it down. Rose doing what he had to do took it out of bounds. And we understand that the Los Angeles Dodgers have just beaten the Yankees two to one and now jump up three games to two. The Yankees won two in New York and the Dodgers swept the three games at Dodger Stadium. David Woodley meanwhile although he has been not denied by two interceptions through for 411 yards today an all time Miami record four interceptions against Woodley two deep in Dallas territory screen and Nathan he wisely dropped the ball I don't know if he intended to do that but if he did he is a very heady quick minded athlete because knowing he was going to be tackled there the only way to stop the clock was to make that an incomplete pass a very gutty call interesting call screen pass 18 seconds on the clock now they've almost got to go deep with this one and hope for a penalty or hope for a miracle catch down the sideline 18 seconds left Three wide receivers coming this side, Dick. That's where they'll go. They have Cephalo on the far side, or it's Harris far side, and Woodley's going to go to Harris. Another interception! And this one goes to Mike Downs! I don't know where Downs is going. He just went out of bounds. But that's the fifth interception. So on a day on which David Woodley throws for more yards than anyone in Miami history, and of course that means the great Bob Greasy, Woodley for 411 yards. He has five of his passes intercepted, and it appears Tom Landry and the Cowboys have won a thriller against Miami. One thing we have to know about that young man, he's, he's a very bright young quarterback, and he'll learn a great deal about when not to throw the football here in this game today. Maybe the biggest intercept of all was on fourth and third and ten at the 11 yard line. He had his man well covered in the end zone and threw it anyway and Thurman made the easy interception when a field goal in that position would have given, given Miami a chance for victory. You saw Don Shula come over and talk to Dave Woodley and I'm sure that what he was saying to him is look it's a learning process. You had a great day. You made some mistakes. Unbelievable. The gun. The ball game is over. The Dallas Cowboys with a late fourth quarter rally beat Miami.